And then you gotta like cue that into the beat. Hey guys, it's Tiny Kyle today, here to talk to you about everything and anything intercooler, talking about different types of constructions, which core would be right for you, and what to look out for if you're looking into a used intercooler. For those of you who aren't familiar, we're gonna go over briefly about how an intercooler works. Obviously you have your charge air coming from your turbocharger through the inlet side of the intercooler. Uh, air will pass through the inside of the core and also ambient air will pass through the outside of the core or water if we're talking uh, water to air intercoolers. Um, it will pull the heat through out of your charge air and then resulting in cooler air coming out of the other side of the intercooler. So next we're gonna go over the couple different types of construction of intercoolers. Um, in front of me, obviously we have a welded uh, CNC milled end tanks welded to a bar and plate intercooler. Um, there's a couple different styles. Always tend to use uh, tube and fin with plastic crimped ends. Both of these different styles of intercoolers have their drawbacks and their benefits. Um, obviously with bar and plate, it's a lot more of a stronger design than a tube and fin. Um, however, the thermal transfer isn't quite as good, but overall it's a, it's a better choice when it comes to longevity. On the end tanks, there's plastic crimped end or uh, typically cast or um, CNC machined end tanks. Uh, with, with the CNC end tanks or cast end tanks, you're gonna get a lot more longevity out of them. Um, however, there's a much higher cost. That's why OEMs tend to use a, a plastic crimped end tank. So when it comes to choosing your intercooler and specifically your intercooler core, there's a couple of things that you're gonna to wanna to look out for. Everything is based on exactly what your application is. If you buy too large of an intercooler, your time to fill is gonna be really long, resulting in some kind of weird power loss in certain areas. Um, we talk about fin density a lot. Um, if you have too wide of a fin density, then the thermal transfer of heat out of the intercooler isn't going to be very good, resulting in higher intake air temps. If you have too tight of a fin density, you'll generally see some pressure loss between your inlet and your outlet, also resulting in poor power. Um, we're gonna cut this intercooler in half so you guys can kind of see exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about fin density within the bar or, um, or within the tube. So, You'll be able to see that and kind of get a visual of exactly what I'm talking about. For those of you, sometimes like me, balling on a budget, that are looking for pre-owned intercoolers. When you're looking at a pre-owned intercooler, one of the biggest things most people obviously look for is bent fins. Um, some of the not as known things to look out for is pinched or bent tubes or bent bars, because um, obviously you can have a leak there and those can be hard to pinpoint. Another thing I like to look out for is oil within the intercooler. Um, if there's oil in the intercooler, it's going to affect exactly how it cools. The air from the ambient air passing through the intercooler isn't going to be able to pull out the heat as easily. And also you could have some resistance inside of the intercooler resulting in more pressure loss. So with all that stuff out of the way, we're gonna go bring this thing over to the bandsaw, cut it in half and show you exactly what it looks like on the inside. Try and get that cut like pretty center. That SD card about to be filled up. You wouldn't want that in your Wheaties. Can I see that? You can look. You, no, you can. You can see it. <laughs> it's aluminum. It won't. It has to be steel to shoot sparks. Can you try it? I guess. Let me put on some gloves. <laughs> so I hate. I hate the chop saw. It's fogging up. Thanks for, thanks for you, it's like fogging up. Well, I didn't know if this was the rated the same as this, so I wanted to make sure that I was safe. So what have you learned here? Well, we learned that I'm, a, I'm afraid of chop saws, I think. And that you can, in fact, cut an intercooler now. What? Aluminum doesn't spark. An aluminum doesn't spark. Why is that? 
I don't know, man, science. So now you guys can obviously see a much better display of what's inside of the intercooler. There's obviously these bars that have a fin array inside of them as well to help promote heat transfer. So your inlet air is going to pass through these individual bars and then the ambient air going through the, the intercooler um, from the outside that's pulling the hot air out of the inlet charge, those fins are stacked above it. When we're talking fin density, the really crucial point is the fins that are inside of the bar or inside of the tube, depending on what kind of intercooler construction you have. These are going to dictate essentially what your power levels are and then also to um, what the pressure drop between each end of the core is going to be. With all that being said, uh, if you guys like this video, want to see us cut more things apart, want to see us explain more parts, how they work and kind of how to you know, shop around and figure out what part is best for you, let us know down in the comments. Um, with that, like, comment, subscribe. Peace out, see you later.